The young lady said she's afraid of violence. And isn't it sad that we who have been the victims of so much violence, now whites fear violence from us. We do not have a history of killing white people. White people have a history of killing us. I would just like to say that I am terrified that even you, someone who's obviously educated, has given up hope completely. Like when, when you call upon us, you say white folk, you say black people, Jewish people. Why can't we come together? We obviously can come together. We just have to, we just have to find a way to do it. Bro, I have been gone for like five days, okay? It almost been a week since I've been gone, but I am back and better. Now, look, y'all, I came across a few crazy videos, you know what I'm saying? But this is one of them. This is a crazy video for me, and honestly, I'm excited to talk about this topic. Uh, this is coming from Louis. I cannot say this man's last name, so forgive me, but he basically explained why white people fear black people okay and this is also coming from a channel of louis spot i think that's how you say the name for video in the link description box below but without further ado enough talking let's get into this video this joke is crazy bro i'm not gonna lie to y'all so get your popcorn get ready you know what i'm saying without further ado let's get let go i just want to say that i'm so scared to go out in the world next year because i was never a prejudiced person until i'm listening to you it's really scary hearing what you're saying i'm very scared you're not free <laughs> My dear young lady, when you go out into the world, you're going to find a reality that you're going to have to deal with. Please don't live in a fantasy world created by television. There's a very real world out there. Mr. Farrakhan, I sit here and I'm seething. The, the things that you're saying only divides us. Well, what is it that he said that makes you angry? I don't like what you say about Jews or any other people. These things that you, and when you look at us, you're not- He's talking about Jews. He's talking about an abasement of their religion Phil, by some me. people. Phil, excuse me, excuse me. What you're doing is snick, just a moment. You have been sitting there for an hour and you've been snickering and sneering at us. Yes. We don't look at you that way. We're giving you the respect, the full hour to listen. You're not Martin Luther King who brought us together. I could listen to him forever, but you're dividing us. Uh, well, since I have, since I have one minute, I really thank you for the privilege of speaking to you and with you. I would hope that we as black people would come together and form a united front to deal with the problems that confront us. And then I would hope that whites would actually begin to know more about the condition that you are totally oblivious to. The Kerner report said that most whites know nothing really about what it is like to live in the ghetto. Um, I would just like to say that I am terrified that even you, someone who's obviously educated, has given up hope completely. Like when, when you call upon us, you say white folk, you say black people, Jewish people. Why can't we come together? We obviously can come together. We just have to, we just have to find a way to do it. The desire is good, but the reality is the total opposite of your desire. And unfortunately, as a young lady, you are not in the position of power to make the decisions to make America work. May I, you know, as, as an audience of intelligent people, I would like to just take a moment to say to you and I really don't think you fully understand what has happened to these people that you look at as second class or inferior citizens in this nation. Black people who were brought to this country were stripped of their names, language, culture, religion, God, and taken totally away from the history of themselves. Here are 30 million people who don't wear their own names. They wear your names. 
who don't speak their own language. They speak English, which is not their language. They never, never were allowed their own cultural expression of Africa. Don't you realize that when you turn a people upside down and inside out, then sell them, not for a day, not for a year, but for 300 years and deny us the human right to know, to read a book, to learn, to understand. And then, after 100, uh, 300 years of that, you allow us into the church, but by that time, you've painted Jesus white, God white, the angels white, and then all these black people have been subjected to a form of white supremacy which produces in the reverse a black inferiority. And this is fulfilling what Jesus said, as a man thinketh. So is he, and as long as our people think the way they think, we will never be able to do what we as a people should do to correct our condition. Over here, please. What I'd like to say, there was somebody over there in the audience who said that they were afraid, they were scared, of when they were talking about the, uh, what he was saying, you see. And what I'm saying is, the other day, you asked Mandela that same question about fearing, white people fearing, you know, what will the black folks do and stuff? We should be running down the street screaming, ramping, and raving, because when you look at the statistics, who is the one dying? From the policemen, from the KKK, from the skinheads, from the black people. We should getting... be scared, it should be the people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It should be us who should be scared. Oh, you all sitting here? Excuse me. I was brought up in, quote, Bedford Stevenson in my time. But I would like to say what scares us is I think we hear violence. May I respond? Yeah. May I respond, please? I'm sorry. All right. Uh, Minister Farrakhan, would you explain why it is relevant at this stage in 1990, with all that we've gone through, why it is still relevant to try and to educate or to get white people to understand the plight of black people shouldn't the energy be directed to us right on Thank you. if i may my work is directly to black people i spend 99 percent of my time dealing with us to help us reform our minds and spirit that we may do for ourselves However, when you live in a society like this, and we know that in order to effect a solution to a problem between black and white, then there's going to have to be some meaningful dialogue between black and white in order to effect a solution. The young lady said she's afraid of violence. And isn't it sad that we who have been the victims of so much violence. Now whites fear violence from us. We do not have a history of killing white people. White people have a history of killing us. See, and what, and what you fear, may I say this, sir? What you fear, and it's a deep guilt thing, that white folks suffer, you are afraid that if we ever come to power, we will do to you and your fathers what you and your people have done to us. And I think you are judging us by the state of your own mind, and that is not necessarily the mind of black people. Okay, I, I see, look, I, I let them cook. I let them cook. I just want to say this. You know what I'm saying? The the stance that I have when it comes to this whole white and black situation. Now, if you don't know me, I am a believer and follower of Jesus Christ. And I'm talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, okay? This is who I follow. And I believe in unity. I believe in coming together as one. I believe that we all come from the same source, which is God. That's what I truly believe. I believe that we all can be one. I believe that we all can be equal if we just try. You know what I'm saying? And then not only if we just try, but what he said about 
their fathers and and the state that black people are in and how white people have a history of killing black folks and black people don't have a history of killing white folks we always talking so much about the past and it's crazy because we continue to live in the past but a lot of black folks do not have the heart of forgiveness for the ancestors of white people but i cannot place what their ancestors did on them because again they didn't do particular what their ancestors did you can be talking to the most genuine white person ever the most genuine loving person that loves all people and yet you just put them in this whole box and say oh white people this and white people that why do we even name people such as by their color they are not their skin color white people are not just white people they're their name i'm not black i'm not a black person i'm, I'm black yes physically but that's not my name you know what i'm saying but when we just say white people this and black people did we put them in the category of oh black people all in one category and that's like me saying all that's like me saying man black people continue to steal i'm basically saying that all black people continue to steal because i'm putting i'm not saying the particular person name i'm saying black people as a whole you know what i'm saying he's saying white people as a whole their fathers their ancestors we continue to live in the past you can educate black people on their history but don't put the history that that black people don't went through on the white people that are living now 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 you can educate them too but the fact that we just continue to put white people in a hole and say white people this and white people that and you could call me a sellout you can say i'm this you can say i'm that i'm all about being equal i'm all about being loving i'm all about being forgiving i'm all about having grace you know what i'm saying because again like i live a good life and i feel like what my ancestors been through i'm pretty sure if they was here today they will be proud at the state that america is truly in right now and yeah america is not the best is not the greatest we still have racism out there we still have division out there but i'm pretty sure that what it is today is better than what they went through back then you know what i'm saying and i'm pretty sure they will be excited to live now than back then when it was a lot of segregation when you couldn't go in the same place as a white person when white people really have the power over black people like i'm pretty sure now today they will they will feel at peace being here now. You know what I'm saying? I just don't like when we continue to live in the past. And as humans, we always do that. We live in the past so much that we never look at the future. We never look in the present. We never live right now in the present. Right now in the present, I'm living a beautiful life. Right now in the present, I have opportunities. Opportunities that I probably wouldn't have if I was living back then with my ancestors. But now that I'm black in America today, I have a lot of opportunities. You know what I'm saying? It has been a lot of stuff given to me. And I look at all these other black black actress black actress black actors black athletes i look at black uh what what is it uh black celebrities just all these black people that now have so many opportunities that if they were living back then when it was soup when it was slavery segregation if they was living back then they would have had those same opportunities but i'm looking at it now and like man we came a long way as black people we came a long way as a culture we came a little white people came a long way you know what i'm saying like I could go into the same spot as a white person and not be judged. You know what I'm saying? I could go into the same place as a white person and drink from the same water fountain as them. Like, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like, I just look at where we are now and I'm grateful and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? I'm grateful that the, the black activists like, uh, like Dr. Martin Luther King fought, you know what I'm saying? The activists that fought, the, the, they fought for this, they fought for this unity. And yeah, we still continue to, oh, we need reparations. We need this. We need that. We still won't, 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 but we never can be grateful for the state that we're in now. You see what I'm saying? That's just my take on this little portion, but I'm gonna let the video, I'm gonna let them finish cook, keep cooking. I just care about unity and peace. I care about just the love because that's what Jesus Christ did. He didn't die for this, se this separate Separation, the segregation like he didn't die for this he didn't die for black people to still feel like a victim of things that happened back then he didn't die for us to continue to blame white people now for what their ancestors did when they don't know their ancestors just like we don't know ours he didn't die for that he died for unity he died for us to come into salvation with him to come into one with god that is what he died for but yet we just knock all that out the window and just still won't 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 Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and just let the video, I'm going to let him finish. I'm going to let him cook, you know what I'm saying? But y'all let me know what y'all think so far in the comment section below. Um, I'm with you in that you're talking about wanting to have meaningful dialogue, and that's a problem. You know, right away, I don't know what's going to make whites happy, for Pete's sake. You know, you're talking about trying to find a solution to your problem. You're trying hard to do that. And we're tuning you right out. We're arguing with you. We're not agreeing with anything. We're not trying to give you a chance. For Pete's sake, you know, what do we want? Yes. 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 Assalamu alaikum.
Um, Mr. Farcon, there's a situation now where one in four black males are in prison or in jail or in some type of probation situation, okay? When I look around, even myself being a black reporter, okay, and they talk about racism of a black and white person go to the job, a black person is going to get the job. I never find that out. And we're in New York City with a black mayor, and I, I, I still haven't seen it. Right. And when I see Minister Farrakhan, not only do the brothers enlighten me, but he gives me hope to not give up, not go get a pistol and stick somebody up, right. okay? Right. So when I see you, not only are you the light and the hope, but I think, why the America, you need to listen. And please don't harm this brother, because we love him. Uh, yeah. Hang on, hang on. yeah. Getting back to what she said, what exactly do we have a problem with? Before you made a statement, you said that I think that, well, not I, you said that white people think that you are inferior to us. I don't believe that. I'm part of the youth of America. I am not prejudiced. I feel more prejudiced right now than I've ever felt. What? Not against black, I am not prejudiced against black people. Some of my best friends are black people. I am, what's, what's the problem with that? Yeah. Yeah. You let him speak, let me speak. Yeah. You wanted to speak to this young woman? No, I no, I don't want to speak uh, to her. Uh, 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 you who wants to talk to her? Yes. No. yes. What do you what do you mean you feel more prejudiced right now? Because the way he's saying he's Because what? What he's saying right now, I mean I feel that you are prejudiced towards white people. Yeah. 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 Okay, but excuse me, excuse me. I think it's like he said, it might be a fear or misunderstanding that you have. Because what fear has he put or what has he actually said here today that makes you feel prejudiced? I think that he said that he said that we think that they're inferior. I think it's partly part of your own complex that you have to get over because I don't feel you're inferior. I have nothing against black people. Yes. Yes. Me answer her. This, this, this is the, excuse me, excuse me, this is the situation. Every young white adult says, I have not done this to white black people. I have not done that to black people. But your forefathers are the ones who have set us in the situation we are in. Now what does that have to do with them, though? You see what does that have to do with them? I, like, again, bro, I, I don't understand. We are so much of, like, we live so much in the past. It's your forefathers that did this to us. Okay, what, what does that have to do with her? What, what, what does it have to do with her? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, white people are being punished now for things that happened thousands of years ago. Thousands of years ago, they're still being punished now. And granted, like I said, I'm not naive to racism in the world. I know there are plenty of white folks out there that that are racist. I, I'm not naive to that. You know what I'm saying? But what what I'm what I'm trying to come into, you know what what my what my state? Well, what I'm trying to say right now cuz I, I don't know what I was going with that. I said statement. I don't know what I was going to, Ignore that. But what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say right now is that we we talk so much about the ancestors of them. This is what their ancestors did. Okay, exactly tell me now what does it have to do with them now? You could talk, that's like my, that's like I'm being punished for something that my granddad did that I didn't meet, that my, no, that my great, 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 great grandfather did that I never met. I don't even know the man, but yeah, I'm being punished for something that he did thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago. I'm being punished for that. Like, you see how I'm saying? It don't make sense. I'm going I'm to let him cook though. Now, what I'm saying is this. When Nat Turner stood up, you all rejected him. You killed him. When Marcus Garvey stood up, you all rejected him, enslaved him. He died a broken heart. Now, what I'm saying is this. Your fathers have put us in the condition we are in, and today you are profiting from what your forefathers have done. Now, now, my grandchildren are going to be raised, and your children are going to say to them, you, they have not done to them because you are the ones who have... You are the ones who are going to do to my grandchildren what they're going, going to experience if the situation continues. Now, what I'm saying is this. When we talk about America falling, what we are saying is this. If you all want to control America, then we must have a land base that we control. You all cannot continue printing the dollar bill and then expect us to abide by your rules when you do not want to give us jobs. Therefore, I'm saying that we have now got to come into negotiations and Minister Farrakhan is the man to listen to. It becomes, it becomes apparent 
more and more as we listen to each other and try to talk to each other that we don't perceive reality the same. And as we're talking about either reconciling differences or separating, it becomes clear that if two people are looking at the same thing and perceiving it so differently, then the two people are operating under a different stimulus. And so when the young lady says, I am prejudiced, to be prejudiced means to judge before the fact. After 400 years of living and experiencing, we're not prejudiced. We are looking at the reality of what we have suffered and continue to suffer. Are you there? Yeah. Are you there, caller? Yes. Thank you for waiting. I'm sorry it took us a while to get you, but go ahead. I know you'll be brief. Um, I'm a white American born into poverty, and I overcame it. You know, the opportunities are here in America, and why can't we just start now? We hear all this violence. Why can't we just talk in a positive way and go forward instead of remembering all these things that are in the past that are that are negative? They were not good for black, yeah. uh, for uh, white. According, according. Uh, yes, Mr. Fair can't comment. According to the uh, state of Black America by the Urban League, if we started right now, they said we could never close the gap to black poverty and white poverty. She said, let us start right now. Let's forget the past. Notice this. When Jewish people remember the Holocaust and want the world to remember the Holocaust. Wait, wait, wait. Why do you want the world to remember? Because if the world does not remember, it is likely to repeat itself. And Jewish persons who suffered from the Holocaust want the world to remember this because the world turned its back while Jews were put in ovens. I, as a black person, want my people to remember what we have suffered and what we continue to suffer so that we will say like the Jews, never again. Never again. Okay, I've, I've been listening in this corner right here and I've heard a whole lot of negative things from the white people here. When you are trying to explain yourself, the white people don't want to hear you explain yourself. They drown you out. They start already trying to drown you out and talk over you. There's a certain amount of white arrogance here, and they don't want to listen to what black people are saying. They don't understand because they don't want to understand. I've heard a woman here say, go back to Africa. Somebody said, we have a black uh, holiday. What does that mean? Yeah. So what? What does that mean? He did not say that. He said, if we have a choice, what some of us can go and some of us yeah. can stay. Remember, but there's no understanding in here. People are just trying to talk to those arrogant persons. You know, when you tell us, go back, please remember where you came from. And when you, when you want to relegate somebody to a specific place, just remember what your origin is in this world. Please, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I want you to understand that you, wherever you are on the earth, you are not a native anywhere. Right. You came there and took it from the native people who are there. So please don't talk about going back, because if others talk to you about that, where would you go? Now, that sums it up. All right. First off, shout out to my guy, Louis, Louis Spot. I think that's how you say his name, Louis. Yeah, Louis Spot. My bad, Louis Spot. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to him. Um, number one, my afro is crooked. I don't even care, bro. But number one, like I said, my, my state where I stand is still the same thing that I said before. I'm all about unity. I'm all about just bringing one of us, one of, one of us together. An Whoa, I am stuttering. I'm all about bringing us all together. Jeez, I am stuttering bad. But again, 
when it comes down to this like this white and black race this white and black segregation black people still want it like i'm not saying totally just throw out what happened to us in the past like, i'm not saying that like i'm not saying just get rid of our history like no don't get rid of nobody history we all have some type of history don't get rid of that we need to know our origins we need to know where we come from we need to know the things that we've been through but one thing i am trying to say is let's not stay there let's move forward what happened it happened it was sad it was traumatizing again what can what can we possibly do now that's going to change what happened in the past we talk about white people still have power white people this and that white this and white that do y'all not understand that the only person that ever will control this earth and run this earth and when we die the only person that we will ever have to answer to is not a white man no we will have to answer to Jesus Christ, okay? Jesus Christ. We will have to answer. And I'm not saying, look, because I, I, I said it's not a white man. I'm not saying that Jesus is black, okay? I look, I don't care for the race of Jesus. I know the race of Jesus, but I don't care for the race of Jesus. And that's not even going to be a debate. You know what I'm saying? But all I'm saying is that that's the only man. That's the only one that we should be focused on. All this nonsense of segregation, this and that. Look, if a person is placed in a certain area it's because god has placed them in that certain area for a reason you know what i'm saying that's what i truly believe you don't have to believe what i believe but that's what i believe in my heart i don't just believe that oh oh we need to take over power we need to have this we need the only person that has power the only person is going to at the end of the day when this world passes away we're only going to two places heaven and hell we only answer to one god you know what i'm saying so at the end of the day does it really matter who has the power and who don't have the power i truly believe if you just follow what god wants for your life you're going to be placed in whatever it is that god has for you in particular so if god wants me to be the next president and he placed that on my heart trust and believe me his purpose his promise that he made to me is going to surpass it's going to come to pass it's going to come to pass you know saying at the end of the day we need to stop living in this race battle it's not getting us nowhere i watch all these different type of videos on race this and race that and race this and i realize that literally it doesn't get us nowhere we stay in the same spot and we'll continue to stay in the same pot, same spot until we move forward once we move forward we can come out of that victimization mindset and we can move into where it is that god wants us the reason why we stand in the same spot because we're still living in the past and we're not moving forward because god wants us to move forward god does not want us to live in the past look the bible tells us do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow have his own problem so if god don't even want us to worry about the next day you really think he wants us to worry about what happened yesterday i'm just being honest like let's be real man you know what i'm saying y'all just need to get right with god cut out all this race battle this race debate this whole black this and black that and white this and white that at the end of the day we are all comfort we all come from one source we all bleed the same okay we all come from god that is our father that is our heavenly father whether you believe it or not that is our heavenly father so at the end of the day this whole race thing it don't matter bro it don't matter i'm not a politician i'm not no no race baiter i'm none of that stuff okay i am just a man that believes in jesus christ and that wants unity in america that's it y'all have a good day i love y'all man hit the like button subscribe to no post notifications being your boy depan god bless stay blessed y'all let me know y'all thoughts about this video in the comment section below keep it positive keep it simple because your comment will get deleted by youtube so i'm just telling y'all keep it positive keep it low-key you feel me anyways i love y'all man speak y'all mind in the comment section god bless stay blessed peace